This is on 3D Printed Soup. I'm going to build myself a MAME arcade machine using RetroPie, a Raspberry Pi, and a load of 3D printed parts. That's right after this. Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week I am looking at arcades and yes, just recently I've got the arcade bug. No, not tetanus, although in the early 90s you could probably catch that from an arcade. But yeah, I thought, you know what? I've bought a couple of those arcade one-up machines. I've made some arcade decor, see link here. And now it's time to actually build a proper arcade machine. Like many of you, I've got a couple of Raspberry Pis kicking around that I bought and never bothered to get them used. And I thought, hey, I can install RetroPie, a wonderful piece of software that lets you play all kinds of emulators and I will make myself an arcade cabinet. Now, you can't really 3D print a full arcade cabinet because it's just too damn big. You need a very big printer. So what I've done, I've made the box out of wood and everything to hold the uh, arcade sticks in, the arcade deck itself, the control system, the speaker covers, all the decor and all the bits and pieces, that's all gonna be 3D printed. So, I've had a dig around on all the different 3D websites and I've found some really, really great files out there. Links in the description below as usual. And let's get on and print ourselves a really cool arcade machine and see if we can't build ourselves a lovely MAME emulator unit. Before we do, thanks everyone who's liked and subscribed. Loads of you subscribing. Makes me very, very happy. So, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, drag your cursor down, hit the subscribe button, Welcome to the arcade which is 3D printed soup. Don't put your cigarettes out in the control decks, don't stick your chewing gum underneath the control decks, and please don't try and put your arms into the coin vending machines. Thank you. Now, let's get on and print ourselves a MAME arcade machine with 3D printed parts. Let's give us a try. Right, first part we're going to assemble is the control deck. I have already um, clipped this together as, as that took some sanding and work to get those to clip fully. But now they're clipped together, that is a really nice solid piece and that's not coming apart anytime soon. Got three holes at the side for buttons, hole at the back for the wire to come out and uh, another couple of holes at the side for the start and select buttons. This is a lovely design. So, yep all screwed together a little bit. Uh, I need to get some more uh, screws on here and nuts and bolts so we can hold it together nicely. But uh, let's move on to the control deck itself. Now this prints in two parts and you use a couple of nuts and bolts to uh, hold it together into one section and then that clips on top of the box and you thread the wires through it and screw the buttons on and the control stick. And yeah this uh, Looks good, it uses, um, I believe it's the Sega layout according to the instructions. And the whole thing just holds together with nuts and bolts. So you just thread it through here and screw the nuts on and you do that with uh, all the holes to make the control deck into one piece. And with those screws attached you then put it straight on the top of the box and yeah that fits nicely. Now let's put some buttons on this. Now these are your regular Samui Arcade buttons, ah, uh, sorry, Samui Arcade buttons, and it just all screws in very, very simply. Uh, and each one of these um, is going to have a different function. So yeah, I'm going to uh, put all the colours together, and each colour is going to do a different thing. So we've got two red, two yellow, two green, two blue. And these will clip into um, a second board I've got, which basically converts the button presses into the Raspberry Pi and yeah they all just clip in via the white clips on the bottom and they should also light up as well using USB power. Now 
and with the button screwed into place I can now attach the cables and these cables then attach into a breakout box which then attaches to the Raspberry Pi. And I've got um, eight buttons on the top here and then you have two buttons on the side as well. So we'll do the, the eight buttons on the side here first. There's the breakout box and each one of these clips into one of these little sockets and then that attaches via a firewire connection straight into the Raspberry Pi and then they should function nicely. And these are the start and select buttons that are going to go out the side holes. We just attach the firewire connector to the USB breakout box and we should be ready to go. Okay, and with these plugged in, they should light up. Let's give us a try. There we go. Beautiful. All the buttons light up and they're all getting power. Now what I need to do is attach this all into the uh, box itself and get this unit sealed off and get the cable put out the back. That's the coin socket attached to each side. I'm going to use one for extra lives and I'm going to use one for uh, start and select. And with the buttons in place, let's attach the uh, joystick itself. And that just goes in with a couple of screws at the front. And a couple of nuts at the back here. Just make sure it's all nicely lined up and then clip it down. And then attach the cable to the breakout box and then straight into the uh, joystick. And with that done, I can put it through the back hole and then clip it down and we can put some screws through it. And with that done, this should now light up. Let's boot up the Raspberry Pi for the first time and see if it, oh, that looked like it lit up. Maybe it needs to boot a bit further. And there we go. Lovely. Side buttons lit up, front's lit up, and the uh, whole thing is ready to go. And with that done, I've designed myself a nice little dust cover to go over the uh, joystick and stop dust getting into the joystick mechanism and just make it look nicer. And yeah, I did that on Tinkercad and just had to mess around and put the Mortal Kombat logo onto a circle. And then punched a hole in the middle to create this lovely file. Let's see what it looks like. And there it is. And pop. Ah, oh, perfect. Fits on perfectly. And then I can put the little... Uh, bauble on top and there we go absolutely lovely nice little Mortal Kombat theming to my arcade control deck and it's not a proper arcade machine without some deco on the side so I printed myself out some slightly 3D uh, space invader decals so yeah I'm going to stick these on the side using some double sided tape and yeah, these are going to sit there and look very sort of space invadery and 1980s arcade style. Right, with the outside done, let's sort out the inside. I've got a nice little bracket here, which I'm just going to attach to the side. And that is what's going to hold my Raspberry Pi in place. And that was 3D printed uh, on my Ender 3 S1. Um, and yeah, it's come out lovely. I did it at 100% so that it's going to be nice and thick and it's not going to break. And just take my uh, Raspberry Pi 3B out of the 3D printed case it's been in for the last sort of five, six years. I'm going to screw that straight down onto the bracket here so I can attach all of the needed gubbins. Easiest part to attach, basically just one screw in each one of the holes on the four corners of the pie. And yeah, it goes straight onto the side and be nice and safe and secure. Right, next up, let's put ourselves some speaker covers. Um, I'm going to put a couple of speakers at the front of it. So I need these covered to make sure no dust gets in. And these should just go here and I'll draw around it with a bit of chalk so I can get an idea of where it's going to sit. like so and then with my Dremel I'm going to drill some holes in it
And let's hope that smoke doesn't set the fire alarms off. And with those drilled, these covers are looking very, very nice. Right, next up, I think we need to do a coin door. Okay, I printed one of these before, but I printed it a lot larger for this one as it's a slimmer version than the um, Mortal Kombat one I did last time. I'm going to print a slightly smaller one and paint it. Okay, here we go. And there we go, straight on the front. Oh, lovely. Yep, that's going to look absolutely great. And I have put that on straight, it's just the wide angles making it look a bit wonky. Right, that's all the 3D bits done. Let's get RetroPie installed and see how this thing looks and plays. After all that, this thing has turned out beautifully. I love the combination of carpentry, electronics, and 3D printing. It's the, the trifecta of awesome. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out. It runs mid 90s arcade games and 80s arcade games absolutely beautifully. And yeah, the 3D printed brackets holding the Raspberry Pi in place, the 3D printed control deck here is doing a sterling job. The dust cover as well looks very, very nice. I'm glad I got a chance to do some 3D design myself as well, making the little dust cover, the uh, Mortal Kombat one. Coin door and the speaker grills as well. And of course, the Space Invader decals on the side. Links to all the fantastic designers and the uh, files in the description below. If you do use those files, make sure you leave 
a comment on the designers to say thank you for making these wonderful 3D printed designs. Thanks for watching 3D Printed Soup. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay happy and safe. Keep printing.